Hello and welcome to Knitting with Betty. I'm Betty and um, I have started this um, podcast as a way to sort of document my knitting journey. So I've been knitting since I was uh, probably about 22-ish, so just after uni. I, I sort of um, discovered it as a hobby um, after uni and I've been knitting sort of on and off ever since but for the past sort of two years I'd say I've really sort of gone in hard and um, joined a few Patreons and um, groups and things to try and make some friend, knitty friends and um, so yeah that, that's a bit about me so what am I going to do in these podcasts so I am going to show you some of the knits that I've completed this year um, some, and I'm going to show you what I've currently got on my needles as well as um, in future episodes I might share with you things like um, books you can listen to or podcasts you can listen to whilst you're knitting um, and I'll probably share with you the sort of knitty um, companies that I've come across um, through my knitting journey so um, First up is my first completed garment of the year, which is this rather delightful little 1950s jacket. So I bought this pattern quite a while ago and this project has been sitting in pieces after I'd blocked it for probably the best part of a year. Um, let me just try and show this to you. Um, I, in January, I booked on a course locally from my local knitting teacher, Millie. Hi, Millie. Um, she did a course for um, UFO projects, so you could bring along um, one of your unfinished projects and for a couple of hours on a Saturday and um, just knit, and she'd be on hand if you were um, sort of stuck with anything. And I think that's probably why this sat for so long, um, not being sewn up, is because I didn't really know where to start. Um, this was one of those wonderful patterns that um, is quite scant on the detail. So um, it's, it says things like, um, you knit one side and then for the other side it's like, go and do the other side in reverse. <laughs> um, so sewing together, I didn't really know where to start, but... Um, Obviously me being the expert she is, um, got right to it and so I managed to finish this in January. And um, so a little bit about the yarn. I bought this yarn on a whim. So um, full disclosure, I work in marketing, um, but I always fall for marketing ploys. So I know all the tricks that, um, that are used because I use them myself. Um, but I fell for, for marketing with this yarn, so um, I didn't know who the company was before ordering it, um, but I was seduced by the colour of the yarn. I think this colour is called Shadow, and it's in 8-ply Luxury, which is 100% Merino, um, and it's from the Bendigo Woolen Mill. And um, I didn't know anything about this company before, before um, buying this yarn, and I sort of took a bit of a risk of ordering a lot of yarn from Australia and having it sent over because I didn't know if I was going to get stung by customs and duty. Luckily I wasn't, um, so <laughs> I hope they don't find this video. Um, so um, when I got it I was absolutely thrilled, it was exactly the colour I wanted and unbeknownst to me they are a bit of a cult company over in um, Australia. I'm so jealous of people that get to go to the um, the woolen mill in Bendigo because you see pictures of people on their Facebook but Facebook group come out with some armfuls of yarn and I'm just so jealous of people who can do that but um, yeah they're really good quality yarn 
Chris was so nice to work with. It was just, it, it's not one of those yarns that splits into a thousand pieces as soon as you start using it. It was just so nice to work with. And um, like I say, it was that eight ply. So I think um, the pattern called for an Aran weight yarn. So I liken their eight ply to sort of, it's like a thick double knit or um, sort of a light Aran. I don't think it's quite as thick as an Aran, the eight ply, but I could be completely wrong. Um, but yeah. I really love this yarn and I have since bought a lot more so I did run out and um, I had to order some more and because it took me so long to knit this um, by the time I'd got round to ordering sort of the second lot of yarn um, they didn't have the same dye lot um, so I sort of took another another risk of well, hopefully it will match up quite well but actually it, I don't think you can tell the difference so the two front facing pieces are in the new yarn and I think one of the fronts just at the top, I can't remember which front it was, um, was in the new yarn. So you, there's that, no no difference whatsoever in, in the colour. And I think um, sort of having talked to my um, my knitty, knitty um, teacher, <laughs> um, she said that sort of modern dyeing are pretty accurate, that from dye lot to dye lot they're going to be pretty similar. So um, you, you shouldn't really have too much to worry about, and she was right. So that is my first knit. I'll take that one off and show you what's on my needles. So let me just readjust my camera. It's slipping down. Technology, hey? There we go. Hopefully you can see a little better. So the second jumper I'm working on right now, I'm going to show you is, oh no. Um, stitches have fallen off. It's not good. There we go. It is the Hayworth sweater from UK Alpaca. So um, I've been using their yarns for, for quite a while. I love um, soft yarns. And um, there are alpaca yarns are really nice to work with. They're so fluffy and soft, um, and they do some really great colours as well. But um, I hadn't tried one of their knitting patterns until this one came along, and um, I think because I think the picture was kind of in sort of vintage styling, styling it, um, drew me in. But it's really pretty pattern. So let me come in close. So it's sort of this woven sort of trellis pattern and it really reminds me of like a Tyrolean type pattern so I can see myself sort of embroidering maybe little spring flowers here and this yarn is is really beautiful colour so it's um it is from the crafty version I bought this at the southern wool show there we go um last July August last summer um, and it is sage in the colour sage and it's a luxury double knit and it is 77% baby alpaca 20% silk and 10% cashmere and it's that cashmere content that makes it so soft it's just such a beautiful yarn to work with and it was it was quite expensive obviously because of the cashmere um, but it's just so soft I can see myself going back for more of this um, in different colours because it's just such a lovely, lovely yarn. Um, I bought 300 grams of this and usually for my size 300 grams can make me either a little short sleeve sweater like this or a cardigan or I can just about get a long sleeve sweater from four, uh, 300 grams. Sorry. Um, and that's in four ply that I usually use, but um, this is double knit, so I thought 300 grams that'd be enough, right? I've just got I've got this far, and that's the first um, first skein almost used up um, bar about this much. So <laughs> I'm really hoping that I'm going to get a long sleeve jumper out of this, otherwise it's going to be a short sleeve jumper. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, I really want a long sleeve because it is so soft. I want it to be that kind of that jumper that I've reached to when I want to sort of snuggle up on the sofa. Um, so yeah, that's that's how far I've got with it so far. Um, using cable stitches. Um, using a cable needle, sorry. Um, it's really sort of mindless knitting. It's it's a really simple um, pattern to follow, and I tend to. Um, I tend to like this with this jumper. I use a pattern from Sydney. Um, I don't know how to say her surname. I'm really sorry if I murder her name. Um, Crawbra, Crawbra. I don't know how to say her name. Anyway, uh, Squid School of Knitting um, is one of the Patreon um, that I sign up to, and I tend to use her pattern or her way of. Um, her way of knitting is her patterns are really great because they are catered to your measurements so um, they fit perfectly <laughs> so um, I will probably ignore what the pattern says on the UK alpaca pattern I'm not sure what the um, neck neckline is and go for this type of back so with the buttons because every single top that I've made in this style, which I think it's the home front, home style, home something um, sweater, it fits and it and it looks really nice and it, it's really easy to make. So um, don't fix what ain't broke. So um, I, that's probably what I'll do when I split into the front and the back, is I'll probably follow her way of doing the the front and the back <laughs> rather than what's on the actual pattern um, and then get hopefully I'll have enough of the sleeves because I I think this is hand dyed um, by the crafty bird so I have a horrible feeling that if I wanted to get more of this it probably wouldn't be such a great match as the Bendigo woolen wool which is you know mass produced and mass dyed um, but um, yeah, you never know. I might email her and see see what she can do. Um, if I like, send one back to her to try and colour match. But <laughs> but that that's what I'm up to at the moment. Um, there, are, I do have some other knits that I have finished. But again, I need I just need to sit down and weave in the ends and like actually finish some of my projects from last year. Like I try not to. Um, like I'm slipping again. There we go. I try not to, um, I try to be a monogamous knitter because otherwise you end up with loads of unfinished projects. <laughs> but it's, it's really difficult, isn't it, when you've finished a project and you just want to start the new one that you're really excited about. Or if you get a new yarn and you post, um, you just want to start using that. So, um, yeah, it's difficult. But I do have, I've got one, two, three projects that need finishing. Oh, is that it? I'm sure there's more. Three with this. But anyway, um, Millie, you need to do more UFO um, workshops that I can book on to actually motivate me to sit down and finish things. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I've been up to. Um, I'll probably do um, these podcasts sort of once every fortnight because um, I'm a really slow knitter. So um, there won't be much progress between sort of now and next week. <laughs> so um, every two weeks, maybe even every three weeks will probably you'll see more progress but um, hopefully by the next time I'll have finished the front and the back and maybe even started the sleeves who knows and I'll probably be swearing at the sleeves because they are stop and stitch so it's quite boring um, but yeah that, that's it for today um, I will put info down below on all the things that I've talked about today all the yarns that I've used and companies that I've mentioned um, so that if you want to go and give them some love, you can. But I'm not sponsored by any of them. Um, it's all my personal opinion and I just love these products. Um, so yeah, I will see you next time.